Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, we'll be creating some home decor items that feature a coastal nautical theme. Now these pieces all have refreshing cool colors that will definitely filter that crisp beachy vibe into your space. Now I'll show you how to create these and also demonstrate a few different ways that you can build them. Now for your convenience, I've provided the complete list of supplies and tools that I use to make these projects in the description box below. Now I am so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I have to say hey hey and welcome back to my amazing subscribers and visitors to my channel. If you are a new visitor to my channel today and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's just jump right into the projects. Now this project is a set of nautical wheel shelves. Now we're gonna need one nautical wheel from the Dollar Tree. We're gonna need two of these canvas signs from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna need a pack of these large craft sticks from Lowe's and these were 98 cents. So we're gonna just lay out our cutting mat and grab our wood nautical wheel and remove all of our tags. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this wheel right down the middle. So I'm just gonna take my ruler and grab my X-Acto knife. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna score it just a few times down the center. Now once we do have a nice deep scoring line, it should be able to be snapped right apart to two equal sections. So now that we have our two sides, we are going to be painting these and I'm going to use a combination of two different blues to get the perfect blue that I would like for my nautical wheels. Now keep on the lookout, these paints are discounted at Walmart for 30 cents and I was lucky to pick these two up. So I'm just going to mix and blend the colors until I find a color that I really like and then I'm just going to apply one coat of this paint to one side of the nautical wheel and I'm going to do this for both of those. And now that our nautical wheels are all painted, I'm just gonna make sure I set these to the side to completely dry. So while those dry, I'm gonna grab my two signs. Now I'm just gonna be removing the canvas from my signs and I'm just using a small jeweler screwdriver to pop out those staples. Now I've seen people cut these off with X-Acto knives and scissors and I'm just using my combination of my jeweler screwdriver and my wire clippers to clip off the nails. I kinda wanna keep the canvas intact because I will be using this later in the project. So once all of the staples are removed, we have a one canvas all done. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and remove any tags on the inside as well. So now we have the frame and what we're gonna do is we are gonna take those craft sticks that we got from Lowe's for 98 cents and we're gonna be using these to cover our frame. Now I wanna mark the center of them and these are about eight inches so I'm gonna mark them at the four inch mark and then I'm gonna cut them equally in half. Now one half of these should be able to fit across the entire frame and we're just going to make a cut mark a bunch of them and then we are going to actually cut all of these in half so we'll have some to work with for our project. Now you always want to cut more than you need because sometimes these sticks can be misshapen. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay a stick across the top of the frame and then we're going to mark any overlap and trim that off with your scissors. Now once you get the right perfect fit, just apply some uh, wood stick hot glue on each end and then press it into place. And you wanna do this all the way down the length of that frame. So here is one of the frames all covered in the sticks and it really does look like wood tiles. I like how that looks. And we just wanna repeat this for our other frame until both of them are fully covered. So now I wanted to stain the wood and I'm using a lighter stain called Shaker Pine. I really wanted this to have a light and airy look so I didn't want to go too dark with the stain. So I'm going to apply the Shaker Pine only on the wood portion of the frames and you want to do this for both of the wood pieces on those frames. Now here's the pieces all stained and you want to let these sit to completely dry. So while those dry, we're gonna grab the nautical wheels which should already be dry. So I'm gonna grab some of this jute twine that I had on hand and I'm just gonna wrap it around my um, nautical wheel handles a few times and then I'm gonna hot glue those ends in the back. 
Now this is completely optional. I just thought it give, gives it a nice little look um, going along with the nautical theme. And you're just gonna hot glue that in the back and we're gonna repeat this for all of the handles on the top of the frame. Now once both of them are all done, this is what they will look like. So now that our shelves are nice and dry, I am gonna paint that trim with this white chalk paint. Now, sometimes you can go ahead and paint the frame first and then add the wood sticks, but I did not want that stain to get on the white portion. So I'm just being really careful applying my paint just around the base, but you can do it in whatever order you feel comfortable. Now I am gonna apply one to two coats of this white chalk paint around the edge, and I'm only gonna do the sides and the front. There's no need to do the pack for this project. And once all of the paint is applied, you wanna make sure that this sits to completely dry. So now we're gonna take those canvas pieces that I talked about earlier, and what we're gonna do is cut out the, um, the front portion of the canvas. Now you'll see the fold lines, and we're just gonna cut it on the original fold lines. Now what we're gonna be using this for is we're gonna be covering up the back um, of our shelves, or actually the bottom of our shelves, so we don't see all of our work on the inside. You guys know that I love to finish off my projects, and I didn't want that open area in the bottom, so I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those cutout canvases, and I'm gonna flip them with the art side facing in, and I'm just gonna hot glue those around the edge of the frame. Now, if you did cut them on the natural fold lines, they will be a perfect fit for this opening. I'm just starting by adhering one side first on the far end to make sure it's even, and then applying hot glue down the remainder of the frame and pressing that piece right into place. Now, if you wanted to keep the artwork for another project, you can certainly use some craft paper or some other item to cover the bottom if you like. And here are both of my shelves with the bottoms covered and everything looks nice and neat. So now we can grab our nautical wheels and we're gonna apply one to the back of each one of those shelves. I'm just gonna align it with the way that mm, I think it looks good like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some hot glue along the back top edge of that frame and then I'm gonna take that halved nautical wheel and press it right into that hot glue. Now for extra security, I am gonna add a few of these staples from my staple gun along the bottom edge, just to make sure that that wheel is nice and secure into place. And then we're gonna repeat this for the other shelf until both of them are done. Now you guys know I love to finish off the back of my projects as well. So I am taking some craft paper and what I'm doing is I am tracing the outline of that nautical wheel and shelf piece all together, including the wheel openings onto a piece of craft paper. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and roughly cut this out at first. And then when I start to actually cut the wheel portion off, I am cutting inside my tracing because I don't want this to be showing through to the front side of my project. Now you also wanna cut inside the lines on the wheel cutouts as as well. Now here is the cutout and now you'll see that it fits on the back of the project very easily and we're just going to hot glue those wheel parts, um, the steering wheel handles in place first, making sure that everything is in alignment and then adding hot glue to, remainder, to the remainder of the wheel and you'll see that it covers everything nice and neat and gives it a nice clean finish. And now just do this for your second shelf. Now in order to hang these, I am just gonna use some sawtooth picture hangers. Now these are available at the Dollar Tree or any hardware store. And I'm just gonna hammer these into the back of my shelves. You certainly can use the jute twine um, and hot glue that in place as well. It's all up to you. And you can also apply hangers to the actual wheel of itself for more stability. So once one is applied, you can just go ahead and add one to the other side and then do the other shelf. And here are my two shelves hung up and decorated and I think that these turned out so great. Now I'm really loving the contrast of that beautiful stained wood and white trim in these pieces. 
And you can decorate these in so many ways and even customize the nautical colors as too. Now even though I have displayed these as single shelves, I have another option that you can update this design. Now here is a self-standing shelf version. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those two shelves and in order to make them a self-standing version, I'm gonna need support. So I decided to use these 10 gallon paint stir sticks that I got from Lowe's for 98 cents. Now what I'm gonna do is cut these down to nine inches. Now I just saw through the whole pack, but you can just remove the six pieces that we will need for this project. So how I'm going to apply these is I'm going to apply three sticks on each side of my shelves for supports. Now before I apply them, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and apply two coats of some white chalk paint to each one of those paint stir sticks. Now you do wanna make sure you cover up all the number markings and things like that and make sure they don't show through in your final paint job. So here are my paint sticks all nice and dry so we can start to apply them to the frame. So I'm sitting the bottom frame on its side and I'm gonna apply hot glue to the bottom corner. Now you do wanna start by adding one of the paint stir sticks nice and even with one corner. And then the second one should go in the opposite corner. Just make sure that they're nice and straight with that corner. Now the final paint stick will be added down the middle and this is going to be centered between the two sticks. So that's why you wanna add that one last to make sure it has the perfect placement. So now I'm taking the top shelf and we're just gonna be adhering those top sides of those paint stir sticks to the shelf. So go ahead and apply some hot glue to the top sides, uh, insides of those paint sticks and apply it to the top level shelf. You just wanna make sure that they're pressed firmly into place. So now that one side of the shelf is done, go ahead and grab your other three paint sticks and do the same thing on the other side with hot gluing them in place. So now if you wanna display some really lightweight items, this would be perfect to display those things. But you know, I am a little bit extra and I love to have my things super secure. So I am gonna use some nails for this project and I'm only gonna use some three quarter inch bread nails that I can just simply hammer in. Now you can get this size from the Dollar Tree as well. So I like to use my pliers to hold them into place and then hammer them in. It's really easy to do and with little or no effort. And plus it gives you peace of mind for security. Now you do wanna do this at the top and bottom of each side of the shelf. And now that that's all done, you are ready to display. And here you have it, a complete self-standing shelf that you can hang or you can use on a tabletop. Now this version is so versatile and will allow more weight to be added to the shelves. And those side pieces are super secure, so you'll have no worries about it lasting, especially if you give it as a gift. Now, don't forget to check out the Dollar Tree to find out all of these accessories that are available to decorate all of your shelves. You guys have to let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. Now this project is a three piece set of nautical wall decor. So we're gonna need three nautical items of your choice from the Dollar Tree. We need 36 of these tumbling tower blocks. We'll need a piece of foam board. And we'll also need a piece of craft paper and some scrap burlap or canvas. So I'm gonna lay out my Sherbonder silicone mat and my carpenter square from the Dollar Tree and grab some of those tumbling tower blocks. Now we are gonna be creating the frames and we're gonna connect three pieces together in 12, 12 sets. So what we wanna do is glue these end to end. Make sure you wipe away any hot glue as you go and you wanna make sure you flip your blocks as you add them together to make sure they're nice and even. So here is one of the three block sets that we are making and we're gonna repeat this until we have 12 sets of three. So we're gonna grab four of the sets and we're gonna lay them up on their side. Now we're gonna be connecting these um, end to end. Just apply some of that hot glue to the corner and press it in there until it adheres. Flip the frame around and we're gonna add another three piece set the same way. Once that adheres, flip it around one more time and then apply that last one into place. Now this will give you the perfect square and these will be used as frames for our artwork. 
Now you want to repeat this for the remaining blocks until you have three square frames. Go ahead and sit those to the side and grab your foam board now. Now I have this scrap piece left over from another project, but this will work perfect. I'm just sitting all three of my frames on there. I just want to make sure that they're all fit for the cutout that I need, but I am going to use one as a template. So I'm just going to take my pencil and I want to trace the outline of that square three times on the foam board. Now once that is done, go ahead and lay down a cutting mat to protect your work surface and grab your X-Acto knife and a straight edge ruler. Now when I cut these out, I'm actually cutting them about a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual square because I don't want this showing at the front of my frame. It'll kind of be nestled in the back and that's the look we're going for. And here is one of those squares and we just want to repeat this until we have all three. So now set those to the side and grab your frames. We're going to be painting these with white chalk paint. Now I like to start painting my frames on the inside. I just find this easier. Go ahead and knock the inside out of the way and then I'll follow up by painting the outside of the frame. Now once the inside and the outside are fully painted, I lay it down and then cover the front edge with the paint. And now just repeat this for your other two frames until all three are fully painted. Now don't forget, if you have a wood nautical wheel like I chose, go ahead and paint that white as well. And then let everything completely dry. Okay, so now we're going to grab that craft paper and our foam squares. Now I'm going to trace out that foam square onto the craft paper and I'm just going to roughly cut it out larger than the square drawing. Now I want to do this six times on this piece of craft paper. So once I have my six rough cut squares, I'm just going to pin them together and then I'm actually going to cut out the actual size on the line that I traced. So now we have our six pieces, I'm going to take one of those squares and I'm going to apply one of these squares to each side of our foam pieces. So I'm going to apply one square to each one of our foam pieces only on one side at this time. Now once we have one side with that square piece on there, I'm going to grab that scrap burlap or you can use like canvas from a Dollar Tree bag and I am going to cut a piece out that's, a, that's larger than my square by at least an inch on each side. Now once that's done, I'm going to first of all fold in the corners on each end with hot glue. Now I am using my Dollar Tree spatula. This definitely comes in handy and it'll save your fingers. Now when you glue these on, make sure that your craft paper side of your foam sheet is down and our burlap is on that side as well. So once we get those four corners um, glued into place, go ahead and fold in all of those edges as well. And we're going to secure all of those edges with hot glue on the back of the foam square. So the, to make sure that the back of it looks clean, grab another one of those squares of your craft paper and we're going to apply that right over the back to hide all of those rough edges. And now both sides of our square are covered with burlap and the other side with our craft paper. Now we want to make sure we do this for the remaining two squares until all three are covered with our burlap. So by this time, your frames should be nice and dry with that white chalk paint. So I'm just checking the fit here to make sure everything looks good and it does. So I'm flipping my frame over to the rough side and I'm going to add a bead of hot glue along the edge. Now once that hot glue is in place, I'm going to add the burlap side down on top of the glue on the back of the frame and make sure it's nestled into place and now we have one of our framed squares. So now that all three of our frame squares are done, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to add a hang tie. Now I just have a piece of jute twine that I tied knots on each end and this is what I use to hang a lot of my lightweight projects and I find that it works perfectly. Now we're going to do this on the back of each one of our frames for our project. And once that dries, let's flip them back over and now we can add our nautical decor. So I'm going to add a starfish and a sand dollar and my nautical wheel to the center of each one of those frames. And we're going to adhere this simply with some hot glue in the very center. You just want to make sure that you place it evenly because once you place it on that burlap, it's going to grab right onto it and it isn't going anywhere. So once these all dry, you can have them and I'll put them on display. 
And so here are my three framed nautical art pieces that you can add to your collection. Now I love the organic look of these pieces and how refreshing they are in their simplicity. And so now you can hang or even stack these, which is great too. Now there are so many nautical themed items you can display in these and you can choose whatever you like. Now I think these make an awesome display for only a few dollars in supplies. Now this project is a nautical beach sign. Now we'll need one of these signs from the Dollar Tree and we'll need one nautical rope of your choice from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna grab one of the nautical sign and I'm going to go ahead and remove the hang tags. Now I think these signs are fantastic the way they look. Dollar Tree really did a great job stepping up their game and design and I really love it. So all I'm gonna do is just amp it up just a little bit by taking some of that thick cotton nautical rope and I wanna go around my entire sign with it. So I'm adding a bead of that hot glue starting at the bottom, a little off center, and then I'm gonna go all the way around. Now I found for the best look of this is to pull your rope very tight so you have a nice straight line all the way around your sign. So once you meet back up in the middle of the bottom, just go ahead and trim off one of the ropes, add some hot glue to the very end, and you want to make sure it's as flat as you can get it. Now you can use the assistance of your spatula or whatever you need to make sure that that is nice and snug into place. Now you can cut the other end, add some hot glue to that, and then you want to make sure that that's nice and even as well. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because we will be covering this up. So I'm going to take the remainder of the rope that we cut out and I first want to tie one knot in one of the ends. So now I'm going to kind of loop it around and I want to form like a nautical type of knot. Just wrap it around in a loop and roll it over and this is what you what it looks like it actually took me a few tries before I made the video but it's actually really simple once you get the hand of it so what I did is I actually formed the knot that I wanted to have cut the end off and tied another knot at the other end now you just want to make sure your ends are nice and even and pull those knots really tight so they don't unravel so once your knot looks okay go ahead and trim off the excess from the each end of the hanging end of the knot and then shape your knot how you want it to look on your sign. So then apply some hot glue to the bottom of your sign and then press your knot right on top of it, right in the center. And that's it, I love how this looks. So we're gonna flip it over and for that last little bit of nautical rope that's left over, I'm just gonna add hot glue on each end and I'm gonna make a hanger for the back. Now I love how this looks already, but you can definitely amp it up if you like to. Now, if you wanted to go more beachy, you can add some seashells from the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm just gonna take one of these shells and I just wanna add one into each corner. I really wanna keep this simple just to keep the sign looking awesome like it does. So I'm just gonna add one of the shells in each corner. Now, if you wanted to amp it up a little more, you certainly can add more shells, especially around the little starfish in the middle. It's completely up to you. But once you are done, you are ready to place this on display. And that is it. I just wanted a simple update to this already fantastic sign and I love it. Now, like I mentioned, Dollar Tree has really stepped up their game with this collection. I was so happy to get my hands on a few of these pieces and share these simple DIYs with you. Now, as you can see, I didn't need to do too much to make this look even greater. Now, I had so much fun with all of these projects today. You guys have to let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking the subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.